Alright, this is the first time uh, talking through one of these videos before for me. Uh, I was going to try to use the factory BMW studs for the drive shaft on the new custom shaft. The holes were too big and uh, didn't really fit right, so ultimately I went with bolts instead. Uh, hopefully the nine people that end up watching this video uh, don't mind me talking or at least maybe like it better than the misspelled words I usually put all over and it takes way too long to do that. As you're about to see, uh, the drive shaft didn't really, the flange is a little bigger than the factory one, the width of it. I didn't want to turn, it was hitting by enough. Gotta come off. So I uh, ended up dremeling that spot out, kind of dremeled a hole in it. Made it so it spun. Didn't take much. The center support bearing. On the two-piece shaft mounts, uh, not quite finished. Still want to add a little bit more bracing to it. I mount the uh, BMW subframe a little different than its mounted factory, and uh, I was concerned with the way that I mount it possibly crushing the subframe. So I uh, added a plate, like a kind of like a giant plate washer thing to it, and uh, and then I welded some bracing that goes down inside of it so it's not possible to to crush it when I bolt it on through that subframe. Should work. I also decided to go ahead and uh, brace up the swing arms or trailing arms just a little bit uh, just to make them a little stronger. Seemed like a good idea. It's starting to feel like maybe I should have sped up this welding part a little late now. This is where I'm adding the uh they're actually anchor bolts into the subframe to keep it from crushing. Well, I hope, anyway. Should work. I actually trimmed down a little bit on the where the factory bushing and the mount is. I cut it down a little and then welded a plate over top of where I cut it down. So the factory diff that I had in that subframe when that car came out of was a, a 410 that was a, a Fiscus limited slip and I decided to order some 307 gears and then disassemble this, this and uh, rebuild the viscous coupling and uh, and then uh, put the 307 gears in it but uh, ultimately things went not so good uh, the ring and pinion gear the pinion fit in the housing the ring gear fit on the carrier but uh, they did not match up at all the carrier did not have enough offset and, uh, and it just didn't even work so it's a giant waste of time I had to shave a couple thousandths off my 30 millimeter socket just to get the nut off the pinion gear, as you can see.
So I decided to go ahead and leave me rebuilding the viscous coupling in this video even though I don't use the viscous coupling or this entire differential or any of this stuff at all of, at the end but it's super cool so I left it in. The viscous coupling is a non-serviceable part by BMW so uh, finding seals and the one o-ring was not possible anymore. I had to slightly modify the viscous coupling because uh, I could not find replacement seals so I ended up just uh, drilling out the holes where the gear oil went in and lubed the inside and just plugged them with uh, like a little basically plug. Keeps the gear oil out and it keeps the viscous oil from leaking out. Keeps the viscous oil in it so kind of was necessary. Not that it really matters to anybody, but this is actually stuff they use in uh, RC, the really awesome RC car differentials. And I bought that at a, basically an RC hobby shop. Yeah, now we can watch me uh, put this wonderfully sandblasted and painted differential and all this time I spent on it. Not knowing that in like a few minutes it's like not going to work at all. So that's super cool. Yeah, the carrier didn't fit at all. I messed around for a long, long, long time before I gave up. But ultimately, I did give up. It did not fit. So I found a guy who had a 293 gear ratio in uh, Wisconsin, and I drove there, and I bought it. And uh, it's got a clutch LSD, and it's actually in pretty good shape. It looks nasty. I'll have it all cleaned up by the next video, so you can... Pretty good deal. And then uh, I, you know, cleaned up and painted and rebuilt the rear calipers. I would have just bought new ones, but I'm just too poor for that. And while I was cleaning up and sandblasting, I sandblasted the brackets and the shocks and everything and just repainted them. Made them look nice. And this is where I'm planning on mounting the power booster and master cylinder. 
But uh, I've got a whole bunch of messing around to do before I get that to work. And uh, that's what I'm getting started on now. So I needed to disassemble that uh, pedal assembly so that I could fab up basically a rod that runs from the factory brake pedal over to where the new location is going to be. And I decided to make it so yeah, it slid inside the, the pipe that they used factory to make the brake pedal pivot on. Then I decided to machine a piece that slid over that same rod on the opposite side that I'm going to weld the lever that uh, actuates the master cylinder. Yeah, just listen to that wonderful sound of this equipment that I have that's from the very first people on earth. Yeah, it gets the job done, though. Barely. Okay, now from this angle, I guess. Eventually, I think I'm gonna drill some holes through that and actually bolt it to the rod on both ends. And get some brass and machine some brass bushings to kind of hold it in place. Daddy, is the Metro Busa ever gonna get done? Uh, winter is coming. <laughs> Winter really is coming, and I definitely will have lots more time to work on the Metro Pusa, so some progress will be made soon. Sorry uh, if the video is too long, and uh, thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Go for it.